Hi YouTube and happy Thursday, St. Patrick's Day morning. Make sure to have your green on today, but don't have too many beers if you're going to participate in those green beer day theatrics. Today, what I want to share with you is the Sharp EL5500 III that I got on eBay in anticipation of my next cassette interface invention. This was known to those in Europe, Asia, and elsewhere as the Sharp PC1403, and like my favorite pocket computer, the TI-95 ProCalc, this was introduced in the mid-1980s, in 1986, just going by Wikipedia. There was a predecessor to this, the PC-1401, that had 2K of RAM, but this 1403 has 8K of RAM, or as we'll see, 6,878 bytes free for user input. It's both a calculator and a basic programmable pocket computer. It has a 1 by 24 character LCD display. A Hitachi SC61860 8-bit CMOS CPU running at a blazing fast 768 kilohertz. Super fast. It has 72K of ROM a 11 pin port on the left side that I won't show you. It's a 11 pin header female with standard 2.54 millimeter spacing. And this thing, most remarkably, will run for years on two CR2032 button cell batteries. Its power consumption is 0 0.03 watts, which, if you're wondering, is not a lot. Let's see if there's anything else here to mention. You can adjust the contrast. Oh, it has a built-in speaker that will hear when I do some test, to run a test program and save one program to imaginary cassette. You can convert this to a 1403H. I don't think there's a US equivalent to that uh, by replacing the 8K RAM with 32K RAM. Anyway, so let's go ahead and dig into running this thing. I have a couple uh, EL5503s. fives i am hoping to use these to write simple algorithms and just demonstrate some basic computer science ideas, games, and algorithms in BASIC. This one that I have has had a lot of use, it looks like. I should even slide it out and show you the back. I think this one was used in a... Uh, in a chemistry instrument like a lot of these were used. This was intended as a scientific computer. And I got this second one because I got a very good deal for it and the surrounding printer and cassette interface that I'll be using in a second. The CE129P, although there is a detached one just with a 11 pin cable called the CE126P. The EL5503, there's also a EL5500 and EL5502 will run between twenty and eighty dollars on eBay. So you can get these quite affordably. I'll be honest, I, I like keystroke programming on calculators a lot better. I just found the code to be more assembly-like and honestly uh, simpler to understand than, than uh, the kinds of unstructured basic you find in these calculators. But as, as you might notice from the keyboard, you have different basic commands listed listed above keys for you know a through comma and then or a through l and then z through m which helps writing programs quickly anyway let me slide this out real quick and show you a little more okay and so i can slide it out and see where that went and i'll just point out the 11 pin interface on the side there this was part of, what is that, Atlantic? I think it was from Philadelphia, so this got um, a good Philly experience, lots of use. And yeah, you can tell it's been beat up. You remove this back cover in order to uh, put in the CR2032 batteries. There's a nice little uh, contrast wheel there on the end. Oh, and that focused pretty nicely. 
Okay, so let me put this back in for the demo we're going to do. Okay, yeah, I just flip that on. Okay, and let's get it connected to the cassette interface. Unfortunately, the the thermal printer here does not work, and honestly, I've had pretty bad luck with much older thermal printers, say from the 80s, although my EP44 is fine. It's really the compact ones. I've had bad luck with the TI-PC200 for the TI-66 and now this, but I noticed one bulging electrolytic capacitor, so I wonder if I just desolder that and, and replace it if I can get this working again. That said though, the cassette interface, which I don't think needs external power, works just great. In order to run the printer, you put four AA batteries in the back, but I didn't have any luck with getting that to run, unfortunately. So I'll have to think about um, either replacing that capacitor or possibly the printer head could have an issue. I, I don't know if I'll spend time with that, especially since my plan is, like with the TI-95 and TI-74, to make an Arduino interface that will replace the, the audio cassette interface altogether. Okay, so let me uh, go down here and focus in on the device itself. Okay, so you can see the screen there. It's it's pretty nice. You get 24, 24 characters and hopefully, yeah, I think it looks like the contrast is adjusted nicely enough. Um, you have calculator mode. You know, you can do your standard infix, 5 times 8 equals 40 and that kind of thing. There's some memories. There's logarithmic functions. Uh, logarithm 10, 10 to the power of um, you know exponentials. Let's see what else we have here. I think this would be in degree. Yeah, it's send degrees, so you can get trigonometric functions, and it looks like it also will calculate standard deviation and maybe yeah, it looks like it does correlations too. So that's that's honestly pretty powerful. You can store 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 numbers into memory using these blue keys and it, I guess, think it does matrix operations as well although I haven't looked that deeply into the manual. One thing I forgot to mention is you can also program this in in machine code using peek and poke I think also call statements in basic and this is really exciting and one of the reasons I got this I think it's one of the smallest pocket computers and the most affordable and the most readily available and the longest battery life that also lets you do machine code programming or you know 61 860 programming I yeah I think that's called the ESRH core anyway so that's exciting because I I'm hoping to interface a DHT 11 or DHT 22 temperature humidity sensor to this and just you know have endless battery life and the ability to calculate statistics on on each of those plus I think I've learned a lot from doing that I also plan to do that with the TI-95 as well and hopefully I'll have that in some future videos okay so that's that's uh, pretty nice there let's get into basic I have this this run function here I think I can had a program at 10 actually here so there's a run mode and you can just execute different statements. Um, I don't think list works in here. There's some subset of functions you can use in run mode, but again, that's just to run a program that you save to edit a program. You go to program and you can list what's there. Uh, wait, list. Oh, okay. I know what I need to do. Yeah, so I have a hello world program and then another demo here from Eddie Shore of, of um, Eddie's any Shores calculator reviews. This dancing star program with a little bit of sound. Anyway, so you can edit your programs like that and look line by line. Okay. Enter. Um, so let's try run 10. Run 10. And there we go. So we have a Hello World program. Uh, and now let's do that dancing star demo. So I'm going to do, um, oh, P, uh, <laughs> P and NP, that, that isn't for, for, um, algorithm, compl for complexity theory, that's just printer or no printer. 
Uh, anyway, so a nice little random factoid you got. Okay, let's clear that. Second run, 400. Look, animations. Sometimes the star disappears. This is going through 48 iterations with a delay of one quarter of a second. Weight 15 is, is weight for how many 1 60ths of a second. So the delay between showing each of those dots is... Um, and there you go. That's, that tells you there's the end of the program. Anyway, so that's all well and good. You can enter programs on this, but how would you want to save these, save these to a cassette or, in our case here, a PC with an audio interface? This is the computer I use for my radio show that now is going to serve as an audio recorder. So anyway, so how do you save these programs as audio files? Well, it turns out that really isn't too bad. I have have the cassette cable, cassette recorder cable connected here, uh, microphone and an earphone jack to respective jacks on my PC. And right now we're going to save everything to disk and then try getting that file back through the same software I use for DJing my radio show. Okay, so we'll let that open up and we'll make a recording pretty soon. I want to be in run mode. I'm going to use the command C save that you saw there. Just two buttons to enter that in. Shift and then M. And I'll save this cassette file and we'll be able to hear it over the buzzer as it's saved. Okay, let's start recording. Oh, oops. Uh. And there's our program, 27 seconds of audio. What you heard was a first 8 kilohertz tone. I'm pretty sure it's 8 kilohertz, and then um, 8 kilohertz and 4 kilo, uh, kilohertz. I'm trying to remember. I think it's like 8, um, <laughs> eight or it might be 4 and 2 kilohertz. Actually, let me uh, look this up. Um, I used to know. Um, I think it's 2 and 4 kilohertz, and then 8 cycles of 4 kilohertz as a zero and then four cycles is one or or something similar to that um, and there happens to be a package you can use to process those audio files into the raw code sharp okay okay so in a second i'll load that program again uh let's see fsk cassette since there were people working on this uh, there are people who are working on this problem. Okay, yeah, yeah, so, it, it, ex, excuse me, so not 8 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, but um, 8 cycles of 4 kilohertz, and then 4 cycles of 2 kilohertz for, um, I'm pretty sure zeros and, and ones, respectively. And it's also more complicated than, um, well, the the um, algorithm isn't quite as, as, as simple as a um, TI and... <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I'll, you know, if you're interested, I'll, I'll let you do your own research. Anyway, so let me go ahead and get that recording and play it back. We're going to use the command C load. Um, and let me find this file. Okay, so it should be in, it's in my recordings folder. 2022.317. Okay. 2022 03 okay I need to rescan the library there we go okay so I'm going to load that up to one of my decks press C load and now we're loading the file 
Now you should hear the file coming in on the buzzer. And hopefully that loads properly. Oh, that looks like it did. No errors. Okay. And we go back to program. And yeah, we should see. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think it. Well, it should change that. Yeah, yeah, so you can see we reloaded that program. I, I didn't get any any errors, which you can see conveniently listed on this card here. Yeah, so so I guess it would be an IO device error, number 8 or 9 or something. I don't see a cassette error there. Anyway, so that just shows you a few of the features of this Sharp EL5500 III. Hopefully sometime in the next few months I'll develop a... Um, uh, all digital interface for this. I know there's some um, existing ones, but uh, that aren't widely available. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll try developing another um, Arduino-based interface for this. Um, I have some ideas about how to encode the data there, so that should be really exciting, especially for uh, North American users of the EL5503. And anyway, so I, I hope that was fun. If you've done some fun things with sharp pocket computers like this scientific computer, let me know in the comments down below. And like and subscribe as always. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your week.